What's up guys, it's Nick here, and welcome to a review on Splatoon 2. Now this game came out a week ago for the Nintendo Switch, and it is a sequel to the original Splatoon, which was on the Wii U back um, in 2015, I think. And um, yeah, this is kind of a port, I guess, to the Wii U version. There really isn't much that uh, they added to uh, Splatoon 2. But I'm going to go over um, what my thoughts are about this game and how um, how they changed it from the first game, what they did good and what they did bad. So with Splatoon 2, the main focus is on the uh, multiplayer and um, in the multiplayer you have your tier 4s and you have your rank battles and they're all the same, it's basically the same format just like in the original game where in tier 4s you have to... Uh, spray as much turf on the your uh, map to uh, win and then for rank battles you have tower control rainmaker and splat zones so sadly they didn't add any new things but um they just kept it all the same but there are some new maps that uh, change it up a bit um, I think what they did was they added I think six new maps I think maybe more maybe less I don't really know they added uh, two from the old game being port mackerel and uh, Moray Towers, but they both have um, new things to them. Where Port Mackerel has these like little sponge things from the uh, single player, which can change up gameplay a little bit. And um, also some of the uh, the little crates you can actually go on and uh, spray ink on to to hide in there or to uh, attack from or to cover from fire. And um, yeah, there's also uh, in Moray Towers there are the little ink rails which uh, you can go um, to and throw from um, your base to the other base or to go to um, just from uh, one section to another but um, yeah those are the minor changes that they added new stages um, so far they look pretty good I think they'll add more for uh, DLC and stuff but um, yeah and then there's also the weapons they added the dualies as you guys saw in the uh, original um, as in the original trailer for the game but um other than that there really aren't any new types of weapons that's really the only new one and the cool thing about that is that you can dodge with them they're really just a uh, better ranged um version of like the arrow sprayer the uh splattershot junior where they have a good amount of range they're kind of like the end zap i guess with two of them and i guess you do have uh two shots of fire instead of spraying out one shot so it's a bit better with accuracy i guess and being able to dodge like that is pretty useful um as for other new weapons there really aren't any other new weapons there are some i guess upgraded versions where there's the uh dapple dualies which um increases your uh your dodge speed but um decreases your uh your range and i think also fire rate too but i don't know about that um, the flings a roller, which basically just increases the uh, the your uh, vertical shot, which I forgot to mention. Some of the main weapons from the first game actually got upgrades here in the second game. So um, the only two that got an upgrade though were the uh, splat roller and the uh, splatter sh or the uh, charge shot. Um, I forget what it's called. The uh, splat the splat charger, yeah, the splat charger got an upgrade where um, you can actually hold your charge for one second and um while you're in the ink so it's a bit useful and then there's also the goo tuber which is kind of an upgrade but um not really because the mobility is a bit better the uh range is a bit worse and the uh charge speed is a bit worse but you can hold your uh charge for five seconds which can be helpful in some situations um but yeah as i was saying though the flings roller is uh, an upgraded version of the uh roller a little bit where it has a greater range of the uh of your vertical hit where uh the spot charger now has a vertical hit where when you jump and you uh, use your roller you can actually activate it and the flings of roller uh greatly increases that uh that range so that um the splat roller has even more range which is pretty good because the splat roller really didn't have much range and any like range weapon like the uh, jet squelcher or splat chargers could definitely destroy the uh, any person using the the rollers so it made things a little bit easier um, 
Yeah, and then there's also, I think, uh, a couple other weapons that got upgraded. There's also, I think, the Crash Blaster, which has a really, fire, really high fire rate, and it's a really cool blaster. But um, it only, it's not that good of a... It doesn't do that much damage, and um, doesn't have that good of a range. But um, other than that, there really aren't any other new weapons, but there'll probably be some more for DLC, just like in the first game. Um, I think our first DLC is going to be that Splatbrella that we saw in the uh, Splatoon 2 Direct, so really hyped up for that. Um, you can actually play it in the single player, which is another thing that I'm going to mention now. That um, So yeah, the single player in this game is completely new. There's a bunch of new uh, mechanics like the grind rails and um, also the dash pads or whatever you want to call them. I don't know the official name for them, but some cool elements that are in the single player and I really enjoyed them. Um, I actually did a let's play of it if you guys want to check it out. It's on my channel or in the playlist. Um, so yeah, it's a uh, pretty cool. I actually really did like the single player. Um, also, the hub worlds got uh, updated for the uh, single player, where it looks really nice, and you actually have to like in order to get to other we uh, levels. It's actually kind of hard, and there are some cool techniques that you actually do to uh, get to certain levels, and it's pretty cool. There's also some uh, collectibles in the. Uh, overworld too so it's not just for show and to get to level to level you can actually find like orbs or you can find uh sunken scrolls or you can find these uh new collectibles called i think sardin sardinium i think that's what they're called which are these like silver uh sardine looking uh collectibles that you need in order to uh level up your weapons which in this uh in the single player you can actually use any weapon after you beat it one time where um, there'll be a Sheldon's request for the uh, first time that you play the level but um, other than that you can use any other weapon uh, once you complete it the first time so it's pretty cool you can switch it up with like the slosher the blaster the heavy splatling you can use the, um, the splatter shot you can use the splatbrella you can use the um, the dualies anything any like type of weapon you can use like not like specific types even though they do have like the carbon roller for some reason instead of the re regular splat roller and they also have the uh, octo brush instead of the ink brush I don't really know why but they have that for some reason but you can't really have like the e-leader 4k which is a new e-leader 3k but it's I guess a bit better because the 4k but um yeah, so you cannot, you can't use that. You can't use like the Splash Hot Junior. You can't use the, um, the like Rapid Blaster. You can't use any of those. Just the main types of weapons. So, you can, even though you can use um, any type of weapon, you can't use like the different types for that type. If that makes any sense. But um, yeah, it's pretty cool. As single player. I really did enjoy it. I didn't really get to read the uh, Sunken Scrolls that much. But um, it does look like that there is a story to them, like a story to the, uh, to the uh, like how Pearl Marina became the new uh, news broadcasters, and I think also how Callie got captured and how Marina is an Ockling. But I didn't really get into that, um, and also how like there's an evil Judd as the uh, other as the bad guys referee, I guess. Um, but yeah, it was it's pretty cool. I did like the single player a lot. Final boss though, it's a bit, it's not really that good as the first one. I mean, I guess it is because it kind of is the same. Um, the ending of the final boss is pretty cool, but I'm not gonna really spoil that much. Um, as for the bosses themselves, they were pretty good. I did enjoy them, but uh, single player in general, I guess, was a bit easy because you couldn't die in one hit. Like you had to, you first like when you got hit, like you were about to die. Or like, it, you basically have two lives, I guess, for one life, which doesn't really make any sense, but that's kind of how it is. So like, when you, um, so like when you get hit like that, you're supposed to be dead. You, it's kind of like an armor, I guess, but like you always have it. And so like, there'll be like this red like fuzz around you or like red static around you when you are supposed to be dead, but like it's still, you're not dead, I guess. And... It makes, you, it makes you slower, and I think it also drains your ink a little bit. But um, if you stay like that for a little bit, 
your um you'll go back to normal in a little bit and then uh you can get hit again and basically almost die but then you'll be go back to the red static so it was a bit easy um i did die a couple times because of like bottom bottomless pits were my probably my biggest weakness because they um just a one hit kill so yeah the enemies weren't really a problem but bottomless pits and um, some hard techniques that you had to do in the single player kind of messed me up and I did have a few game overs here and there but um not really anything major not anything like frustrating I think I only got like one game over per level I never got two game overs in one level so it wasn't that big of a deal but um I still did enjoy the single player and even though it was a little bit easy I still really did enjoy it and some of the later levels actually were pretty tough um i was a bit disappointed though that like the octling levels didn't have any new stages like in the first game because like in the first game you could play like kelp dome and like bluefin to port stuff like that but that were dlc later on but here they're just the uh new stages and some of the old stages too so um nothing new but it still was cool that uh the octlings also did have new weapons too so they had the carbon roller they had the slusher they had the blaster stuff like that so that you could prepare yourself for the uh multiplayer so that was pretty cool um as for the uh ranked battles um they are just average like they're the normal ranked battles from the uh first game but with all the dlc and stuff so splat zones weren't the only aren't the on i can't even speak aren't the only uh Rank battles like in the first game before the DLC, you still have your Rainmaker and um, your Tower Control, uh, just like how the first game brought it over to the um, with DLC. So, um, but yeah, the ranking I guess is a bit different though. Instead of having like numbers and um, like losing, uh, like it's going like by a hundred for uh, per um, like ranking or per like letter rank. Um, it's like a tube and there's like a halfway point and if you get past that halfway point then you're safe and you can stay in that uh, ranking or you can get better depending on if you do better or worse but if you if you go over the line and the okay line that means that if you I think if you lose like four times but it's not really losing four times because there's like the tube and you have you can have three cracks on it but the fourth crack on the tube will break it and um if you got past the okay mark you still will be in that rank but if you got below the okay mark which is like halfway then you uh, go down a rank and um you can actually skip a rank sometimes like there will be times when like especially like in c minus or c plus or c um where you might be really good and that last match between going between ranks you can actually skip a rank so from going to C minus, you can go from C minus to um, to C plus, or you can go from C minus to A minus. Apparently, like I saw, or actually C plus to A minus. I think I saw as the uh, direct showed it, which I doubt that ever happened. That ever happened to anyone. But um, I did skip a rank from C plus to or C minus to C plus with a uh, rainmaker. But other than that, I didn't really get any other uh, rewards. I guess for doing good for my team but if you get like number one in your team and um it's like your last match between ranks i think you will um go up a rank or two so that's pretty cool um but yeah um the ranking is kind of weird and sometimes you won't get a crack like when you get a defeat sometimes you won't get a crack in your tube sometimes you will i don't really know what determines it also the ranking like in your team I don't really know what determines it either because there's no, there's no like, in the last game it was uh, kills to death ratio, but in this game it's like the uh, specials count, the I think riding or like the objective counts, so like riding the tower, uh, bringing the rainmaker to the other base, or um, keeping the splat zones controlled, I guess. So um, I think all those like are factors of how you um rank in your team so it's really weird it's not it doesn't even show deaths in your uh in your uh like placement it only shows how many times you use your special and how many times you killed someone 
it doesn't show your deaths or it doesn't show like how far you brought the tower or how far you brought the rainmaker or how many times like you uh how many times like you secured the splat zone or how many uh or like how much paint points you like did I don't know like it doesn't show any of that it does show how many uh deaths you have in the app which um I don't know why but yeah it does and the app it, um itself is really its own thing and it has like game chat and stuff like that or yeah stuff like that and um it's its own thing basically so I'm not really gonna talk about it much in the review I did get, check it once in a while for like rank battles and what the rank battle is gonna be for uh, when I got home like if I was away and I didn't have Wi-Fi for my switch I usually just checked it on my phone and saw what the rank battles were for uh, when I was gonna get home and uh, or the what the maps would be and what the uh, ranked battles would be and that's another thing with ranked is that in this game um, the ranks are actually for each mode so you will have a rank for uh, tower control you have a rank for rainmaker and you'll have a rank for um, splat zone so you have to work on each of those things and not just worry about one where in some cases like in the first game you could just do tower control or you can just do rainmaker you can just do splat zones and you can be s plus but you you maybe not know how to do the other ones that good but you just wait for that uh, moment for uh, those special like those specific events but instead in this game um, you get ranked uh, individually for each uh, event but um yeah other than that uh, there's also a new mode in this game called salmon run which is basically like zombies or like survive the waves and stuff so you have waves of enemies which are called uh, I think they're called salmonid and there's also boss salmonid which each of them have um, their own unique abilities like the boss salmonid also the salmonid themselves are they come in like big medium and small and um it's pretty tough i did have a bit of trouble with it um but if you have four players and they don't lose any communication you're pretty good um also the cool thing about uh salmon run is that you have four specific weapons and those uh weapons will uh you switch every wave and yeah you have to have one of those four weapons and so you can't use your own weapons you have to get used to the other weapons which is pretty cool so you can get used to um, the new weapons and the old weapons I guess too so it's really cool um, also you get your own special which in this game all the specials are completely new but um, in the salmon run you have two uses of your special you can only use your special twice and um, they're random every time so you could have the inkjet you could have the uh, Splashdown, you could have the Stingray, all those specials will be randomized uh, every time you play. Um, also, there is a ranking in a uh, Salmon Run where I think it goes from like amateur to like overachiever to like professional, something like that. And um, it's really cool. So that that's how they uh, set you up with other people. So you're set with other people that are in your skill level, which is really helpful. So I really did enjoy that. And um, it's a really cool mode that I'll probably show off later on. But um, yeah, had a lot of fun with that. And also, um, you get rewarded for it. You get rewarded money, or you get rewarded Krusty Sean tickets, which I'll talk about later. Or you get chunks, where you can uh, swap them in for this guy named Merch, I think his name is. And you can uh, set your slots to uh, what they are. But the annoying thing is, you need 10 chunks to actually have one to put it in a slot. And if you have like one already, you have to have 20 the next time. So if you have like ink resistance as one of your subs, um, you need uh, 20 more chunks to put another ink resistance for it. So it's really annoying, but yeah, you need 10 chunks to count as one. I don't know how that works, but yeah. So um, another thing that's really cool is uh, Krusty Sean, who uh, now has his own like food stand. You um. You basically give him tickets that you can find in Salmon Run, and you can also find single player, which um, you can boost your experience or you can boost your money um, that you get for the uh, next 20 matches. So um, you can either boost your money by 50% or your experience by 50%, or you can make them doubled. And um, 
they last for 20 uh, games, no matter if you win or lose. But most of the time you want to win so that you get more. So um, yeah, those come out pretty handy if you're running low on money or you really want to level up fast. And um, yeah, they were pretty good for uh, people that want to level up fast and I used them quite a bit because I wanted to get more weapons where in this game uh, every level that you get you get a new weapon which I think was in the first game too and in this game you can go up to level 30 where in the uh, first game it was level 20 until there was an update that made it level 50 but in here it's level 30 for some reason I don't know if they're gonna up late the, you know, <laughs> they're gonna update that like uh, last game to maybe they're gonna put it to level 50 or maybe even higher because of the crusty Sean tickets but right now I'm like level 24 so it's not that bad and I and it's only goes up to level uh, 30 so I'm pretty close to the maximum level so maybe they will add some uh, more levels so that you can get more weapons and stuff like that but um yeah other than that um, there are some weapons missing like there's no swifter there's no bamboozler there's no um, some other weapons that uh, weren't in the, this game. There's no Hydra Splatling. There's um, no, uh, I can't think of the other weapons, but some weapons are missing in this game, which um, is kind of disappointing if you did use those weapons. For me, um, most of my, the weapons that I used were in this game, but um, there are some that are not in this game, sadly. I don't know why they wouldn't add it, but they just... I guess they didn't make the cut like in Smash Bros or like Roy and Dr. Mario didn't make Super Smash Bros Brawl so they didn't make it um so these weapons from the first game didn't make it to the second game which again I don't know why but that's what they did so um yeah other than that though uh the multiplayer I didn't really have that much trouble with I only had one connection error um while I was playing, while there was like a couple other connection errors, while I was like waiting, and like I was waiting for a long time, and then it uh, uh, eventually said connection error. So, um, but there really wasn't any problems. Um, I did have some desync issues, but I don't know if they were from the game or the internet connection or from my Joy Cons. I don't know which one it was, but I don't think it was the game. So that's not really a con, I guess. But um. Yeah, uh, really, there re really isn't much else to talk about. Um, overall, it's really fun, and I really did enjoy it. Multiplayer was a blast. Single player was a blast. Salmon Run was a blast. Absolutely had a lot of fun with um, each of them. The story itself is pretty good, um, and I do like the new uh, the new news broadcasters, Marie, Marina, and. Uh, Pearl, which um, was also another thing that I wanted to mention was that every time that the stages uh, change, you don't have to go through that news broadcast, and you also can skip uh, Sheldon's uh, talkings of the uh, the weapons too, and click hurry up because he's such a talker, so you can actually skip over that. Um, but yeah, other than that, there really wasn't, um, you didn't really get to... I guess notice Marie, Marina's and Pearl's personality that much because there wasn't that many news broadcasts. The only time you really saw it was if you booted up the game, but other than that, um, you didn't really get to see them talk. But hopefully, we'll see uh, more of their personalities through the Splatfest and stuff, just like in the first game. And um, yeah, I really wish best for the future of Splatoon 2 because I know that there will be a lot of DLC just like in the first game. Because the first game really didn't have anything. Like I said, it started off with Splat Zone. That was the only ranked battle. But then adding two more. So, um... Yeah, there's also some changes to uh, other things. Like the uh, subs and uh, some specials, I guess, too. Where uh, there really isn't, like, a bubbler. And some of the specials, I feel like, aren't really that good. To be honest, I don't think they're as good as the uh, ones in the first game. And um, some of the subs, like the Sprinkler... It's really good in the beginning, but it slowly gets worse as uh, time goes on. There's also the ink mines, which they can't kill at all. They only do like 30 damage or so, and they um, once they explode, they actually track the enemy, but they don't kill, which is kind of sad. But 
yeah, they nerfed those, and then, um, some of the other weapons, um, kind of stayed the same, but yeah, there really isn't really a good special weapons, like, in the first game, you had some good special weapons, like the Kraken and the Bubbler and the Ink Strike that I really did enjoy, but here, I don't really like some of the special weapons, like, they're really not that, I guess, special and powerful. Like, you have the ink armor, but that only lasts for, like, a few seconds. Not even, like, uh, ten seconds, I don't even think. You know, and you have the, um, Tenta missiles, which home in on the enemy, but, like, I guess they're more of, like, a uh, distraction where the, uh, enemy will have to avoid the Tenta missiles in order to survive. And then there's the, um, there's, like, other specials, like the ink jet where it just leaves you vulnerable and very easy bait for uh, uh, snipers and then you have the stingray which is hard to see and hard to use to be honest then you have the ink storm that doesn't really kill just like covers a bunch of ink and um, just covers I guess I guess it's good for like splat zones and like to add up damage so that like you have like a certain amount of damage with the ink storm and then you can add it up with uh, your attack and then you have like a splashdown which is really good for like uh, close range combat but still leaves you vulnerable while jumping up and um, but it's really good for like I guess super jumping but most of the time when you have your special you're not really at your uh, super jumping or near your uh, spawn because most of the time when you're super jumping you're uh, at your spawn but um, other than that specials are not really that special I guess and I didn't really find that they were that useful and I didn't really get to kill many people or get to uh, cover that much ink with them as I did in the first game. But um, other than that, this game is really fun and <laughs> very addicting too. Um, and they did change a lot of things from the first game. Some are good, some are bad like I said. And um, yeah, but overall, it's a really fun game, and I highly recommend it if you have a Nintendo Switch. But, um, like I said, this game is, um, really good. And, um, yeah, if I had to rate it, though, it'd, I'd probably give it a 9 out of 10. It's not perfect, but it does have its, um, flaws here and there. But it's still, um, a great game and very fun to play haven't played it with like anybody locally but played a bunch online played a bunch of single player played a bunch of sand run and from what I played it's really fun and if you have a Nintendo switch this is a must buy so um anyway thank you guys all for watching make sure to like comment and subscribe and stay tuned for more Splatoon 2 and other reviews and other things Nintendo right here on Town Nick bye